Here at Astroveo, we study the night sky, a good chunk of which is filled with stars. Big and small, different colors, far apart or bunched together like in the Milky Way. The diversity of stars visible to our telescopes is one of the great tools we as astronomers have to understand the universe around us. Whether we're learning about their lives and evolution, or their ends and deaths like David and I study, stars are super important to the study of the cosmos. It's for this reason, along with many, many others, that stars often show up in art as well as science. Whether it's paintings like The Starry Night by Van Gogh, or TV shows like Star Trek, or movies like Star Wars, the star-filled night sky holds a special place in our hearts. Today, I'm gonna walk you through how to make a fast but realistic night sky in Blender. We'll first make a super easy procedural night sky that you can throw into any scene, anytime. I used this technique very recently in making this clip for an upcoming documentary series about Jupiter. Subscribe to Astroveo so you don't miss that. Next, we'll make it more dramatic and use real data from the orbiting satellite Gaia to add the Milky Way to our night sky. Finally, we'll add some trees to put a finishing touch on the render. Let's dive right in. Okay, so you want to start out by deleting everything from your default scene by pressing A to select all and then X to delete everything. Click on the top left corner of the view and drag it to split the window into two views. Next, you want to switch one of the views to the shader editor. Switch the shader editor configuration in the top left from object to world. This will pull up the default background node, sending a gray background color to the world output node. If we switch to the rendered view by hovering in the viewport and then pressing Z and selecting rendered, we can see a live preview of the rendered scene. Let's take this opportunity to make sure we're in the cycles rendering engine and switch to a GPU if you have one. Now we're looking at the rendered background. If we change the color of the node, it'll change the color of the background. And in fact, any operation we pipe into the world output node will show up in the environment. So to make this easy procedural sky, we'll start by adding a Voronoi texture node with Shift A. Connect the color output from the Voronoi node into the color input on the background node. This node will create Voronoi cells of random shape, size, and color, and add them to our world shader. Next, add a color ramp in between them. This will convert the Voronoi cells to black and white, and then allow us to control sort of which ones get shown. If we increase the scale on the Voronoi texture to 1000, it'll create a sea of granular noise. And by changing the color ramp, we can emphasize the brightest and whitest cells, leaving everything else black, which gives us a nice, easy night sky. So let's render this really quickly. So first, add a camera back to your viewport with Shift A. Go to the right panel and select the output settings, then check off render region. This is good, it'll limit the viewport rendering to the view through the camera, which improves performance. And then you can hit F12 to render. And we've got a nice easy starry sky. But let's make it more interesting. We can add things like the Milky Way to our scene by taking advantage of incredibly high resolution star maps produced by the orbiting telescope platforms like the Gaia mission. If you search for something like Gaia, Star Map, Galaxy, and Google, you'll get these wonderful maps which you can download from the ESA website in high resolution and full color. So go ahead and download one of those. The next step is to mix this map in with our janky star map. If you add a mix shader to the world node map in between the background and the output and connect a new background node to it, you can see that if we vary the value of the mix shader, it'll mix these two backgrounds together. Next, you want to add a texture coordinate node, a mapping node, and an environment texture node to the background node and connect them all together from generated to vector to vector. To speed things up, you can go to your preferences and make sure the node wrangler add-on is enabled and then select the background node and hit control T and it'll add those nodes automatically. So now you can go and find your Gaia image and add it to your scene by importing the image into the environment texture node. We've got a beautiful sky map in our scene now. If we play with the mix shader, we can alter how bright and prominent the map is in our scene. Hi guys, this is future Joseph dropping in to say, sorry, I made a mistake. Before you do the next step, you gotta add this node configuration, a mix shader in between the background node and the original mix shader, and then connect the transparency node into the bottom input of this new mix shader that you added. 
Sorry. So for the next step, connect the color output of the environment node into the factor on the mix shader and insert a color ramp in between them. This will let us control how the Gaia map fades into the rest of the sky. And then you can play with the sliders and get a fall off you like. Next up, we're gonna add some trees. So go back into your preferences and make sure the sapling tree generator add-on is enabled. Add a plane, scale it up with S, and then add a tree with Shift A, go to Curve, and then Sapling Add-on. You'll get a lovely default tree. Be careful though, don't click anything outside of the menu that just popped up. Otherwise, the menu will disappear and you'll have to start over. So now you want to switch the tree preset to Douglas Fir and change the settings view to Leaves. Make sure Show Leaves is checked off. Add 200 leaves, make them rectangular, and make them a bit longer than they are wide. Now select the tree body, hit space bar to bring up the menu, and search for Convert, and click Convert Curve to Mesh. You're going to want to switch your shader window back from World to Object, click on both the tree and the leaves separately, and give them each a new material. You can call them tree and leaves like I did. Next, you want to shift click to select the leaves and tree together, so you want them both selected at the same time, and then hit Control J to join them into one mesh. Give them both pure black textures for the tree and leaves textures. The trees will basically be silhouetted, so it doesn't need to be more complicated than this. So now move the tree below the plane using G and then to grab and then move it below. Select the plane and add a particle system. Switch the particle type to hair. Then under render, choose render as an object. Select your new tree. Adjust the rotation of the trees until the trees are standing up vertically. Now, before we set the scene, we want to have the Milky Way arching over the treetops like it does in real life. So we can do this by returning to the world shader in your shader editor, and then editing the rotation of the mapping node until you have an angle that you like. I went with 45 degrees for X and Y, because if you change Z, it'll rotate the whole scene around like a globe. Next, you want to use your middle mouse plus the shift key to try and navigate to a section of the render where you have some trees and the Milky Way in the same view. Once you have a view that you like, hit Control alt 0 to snap the camera to your view. For this shot, I adjusted the camera resolution to a vertical 1080 by 1920 in the output settings on the right panel to make it look like it was shot with a phone. Use G and then R to move the camera around in space and just repeat this process until you find an angle that you like. A lot of this is just playing around with settings until you find things that you think look good. All right, we're almost there. We just need to make one last tweak. If you look at the leaves on the tree, they look kind of blocky because they are, right? We just added some rectangles. We can fix this by adding a real leaf texture with transparency to make the leaves look more natural. So go on Google Images, find a pine needle bunch image with some transparency, download it, there's a bunch, and download whatever one you like, and add it to your leaf shader with Control T again. So import the image you just downloaded into the image node, and voila, your pine needles now look a bit more realistic. We're on the last step now. So hit F12 to render your image, once it's rendered, switch over to the Compositing tab and add a Glare node with the Fog Glow setting. Turn the threshold way down to add some bloom to your image. Nice work! You just made a realistic night sky in Blender. Let us know uh, what you use it for in the comments below, and stay subscribed for more space content and more Blender tutorials like this. Thanks for watching.